I constantly feel like I am gravitating towards filming in my bed now. And to be honest with you guys, I'm not mad. Hey you guys and welcome back to a, another video. Today I am going to be talking about my first trimester survival guide and what really got me through those first 12 to 13 weeks pregnant. Today I am 14 weeks and two days. Those first 12 weeks were really taxing and even kind of the 13th week. So if you are struggling or you are going into your first trimester and are looking for some tips that might help combat some of the symptoms that you are going to be experiencing, stay tuned. I will We'll also be sharing baby number two's gender in this video. So if you are new here, my name is Ella. I make motherhood and lifestyle content and I have a daughter who is two years old and I am expecting baby number two. So if you are pregnant or like content like this, please go ahead and subscribe below and follow me over on Instagram. Jumping right into today, I have to say the first trimester can be so exhausting and just filled with a bunch of unknown symptoms that if you are experiencing for the first time or even the second time, because honestly, every subsequent pregnancy is completely different than your first. So there are going to be things that you are probably dealing with the second or third or fourth time around that you did not deal with with the first. And I have to say, I can experience that firsthand. I had such a different pregnancy, especially my first trimester this time around. I did a little bit of navigating myself and I had watched a lot of these videos with my first child and I remembered some things that had helped and so I went ahead and tried these and I can tell you right now, some of the things that I tried were absolute lifesaver and I would love to share them with you guys today. The first thing that I was like kind of a given but something that I did a little different this time was prenatal vitamins. The prenatal vitamins I took last time, I don't really remember the brand, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop pictures up here on the screen as I go through some of these things. Um, this is the prenatal that I took the last time I was pregnant and I did not mind it at all. I did like that it had the DHA supplement with it, um, which is good for brain development and just extra nutrients. So I do like to supplement any um, prenatal that I take anyways, but this time I did go ahead and bite the bullet and try the ritual vitamins. If you are someone that watches a good amount of YouTube videos, you will know that a lot of moms try ritual vitamins when they are pregnant and a lot of times also postpartum. This was one thing I did differently from this pregnancy versus my first. And I have to say, I understand what all the rave is about. With my first prenatal vitamin I was taking, the smell of just opening my prenatal vitamin made me kind of like gag a little bit. Um, but these are amazing. They smell like lemon and I believe that you can also get mint. So whatever your preference is, that really helps bring down the nausea from just opening the bottle. The other thing that I like is that the folate is liquefied. So I found out recently that like 40% of women don't actually process folate the way that it needs to be processed in order to actually absorb. So this just ensures you're going to get it regardless of whether you are part of that 40% or not. In addition to those prenatal vitamins, the other thing that I do, especially for the first trimester, um, I have another bottle on the way. I had just finished these, but I take the natal choline supplement with it. Um, I personally like that because I am someone that does not like a lot of eggs. Um, eggs, especially to me in the first trimester, are a big like no-no, and that contains a good amount of choline um, that you need to finish and fulfill your supplement needs. The Ritual Vitamin does contain that, but it doesn't contain the full amount that is suggested for your pregnancy. So I did love having these because two of these gave me that full 100%. With two of these, you get 550 milligrams of um, choline, which is sufficient. I think it's like 500 milligrams is suggested and in the ritual vitamin itself I believe it's 50 milligrams so that's 600 right there I just like to know that I'm getting that extra boost and getting fully rounded out especially since the first trimester I feel like I eat mostly very bland and basic foods the second thing that I'm gonna suggest for you in your first trimester is treat yourself to a nice water bottle for some reason I feel like 
When I get a new water bottle, I'm inclined to drink from it from a very long time. So I went ahead and purchased this one that's basically like a Stanley dupe. I had talked about it in a previous video um, with my early pregnancy symptoms, but I will go ahead and link this one again or something that's like it. I personally got this one, I think, from TJ Maxx. Um, and it was like 14 bucks. It makes me compelled to drink the water. I used to carry a really large one, but it didn't fit in a cup holder. So having one that can fit in a cup holder so that you were inclined to bring it in the car with you or wherever you are going was a big motivation for me to drink more water and get in all that extra hydration that I need. A branch off from the water bottle is invest in some liquid IV. I found that with just being dehydrated, but also really not being that hungry, and if you are someone who gets very nauseous to the point where you are throwing up, you are gonna get more dehydrated than normal, so the liquid IV is a good way to ensure that you're getting that extra um, hydration, and it you can have like one a day. So those were really good, and they were helpful. If you have a Costco membership, get them from Costco. You can get a really big bag for a really great price. My next tip is definitely going to be something that people will tell you on and off, but I cannot stress how important this is, is taking naps. First time mom, I napped all the time. I would be like, yep, tired, four hour nap. And that was like so nice. I felt more relaxed. Going into my second pregnancy, your mamas know that you don't have the time to nap that you would have with your first baby. I literally have written down here, take them whenever possible. If this is your second baby, allow yourself to change your routine and give yourself space to rest. This was something that actually my husband had to like have a pep talk with me about. He was like, you are pregnant, you are tired, you need sleep. I never really wanted to change my routine. I was like so gung-ho on it being, I have to make dinner at this time and I have to do this and during nap time I have to clean this and I have to pick up the toy room and I have to, it was all of this list of things to do and it wasn't prioritizing me. I had to just be like, okay, for the first couple months, like the house is not gonna be as organized the house is not gonna feel as like homey and put together as I normally personally like it. Really allowing myself to be okay amongst a little bit of clutter or like disorganization was really hard for me, but I will tell you what was harder, not napping. Napping when Abby napped was my lifesaver for the first 12 weeks. I told my husband like, I am so sorry. And he was like, why are you apologizing? You are growing a human. And you have to remind yourself that you are growing life inside of you. And it is literally sucking the life out of you while it's doing that. So be kind to yourself, change up your routine and allow yourself the time to nap. And it's not like a nap when the baby naps, but if you have another kid, try. For moms who have multiples, I really don't know how you're doing multiple pregnancies. If I get pregnant again, I will let you know how that goes. But for the most part, when my toddler is taking her midday nap, I try to rest along with her just to get an extra boost of energy, especially around that three o'clock time when you start to crash. I'm going to let that last tip roll into this next one, which would be crock pot meals. I never thought that would be a first trimester essential until I sat down to write about the things that I wanted to film in this video, and I'm gonna tell you why. Three o'clock rolls around, and normally when I'm not pregnant, that's kind of my crash time because it's like the middle of your day, you're kind of transitioning to nighttime period, and my daughter's napping, so that's like kind of when my house winds down and is quiet, and I start to feel that like a little bit of a crash. Since I'm trying not to drink a caffeine boost at that time, I am so exhausted that like I am probably napping and I'm not ready to make an entire meal at four o'clock. One of the biggest things I've been doing is while I'm having my coffee in the morning is like setting up my day of like what's for dinner, crock pot meal, get it going so that once you take that nap that you should be taking when you can, and you wake up and your family is ready to eat dinner, it's just ready to serve. I found myself on too many occasions laying on the couch at 4.30, absolutely drained, 
and we didn't have dinner because I was like, babe, I'm too tired to cook. I'm exhausted. And the last thing I wanted to do was resort to unhealthy quick options. So having a crock pot meal schedule, even if it's not every single night, but like three times out of the week, we were allowing ourselves a pizza night just to make it super simple. And then making one dinner that I actually plan um, was really helpful for us. Keeping in food theme, one of the other things that I will say is a very common symptom is not really craving much food. Things don't really sound that incredible. And especially if you are stomach nauseous, I have found that the brat diet is something that has been a good friend to me. The brat diet basically consists of bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. These are all foods that are extremely easy for your body to digest. So it's not something that's going to sit harsh on your stomach. They're not too fatty. They don't have a lot of acids. These are really good foods to eat in smaller quantities. The other thing that people always say is high carb foods. So like cereals, that was something I was craving a lot with cereal. Um, if you put banana in your cereal, it's also helpful. It's a good boost of potassium. That food diet, I will say, was extremely helpful for me and making me feel like I was still getting some like sustenance, but it wasn't rocking my stomach. With nausea being something that's mostly in the forefront for most pregnancies, if you are one of the few moms that has skipped this, I'm telling you right now, bathe in that glory because I didn't have nausea with my first daughter and I truly did not understand when moms were like, the first trimester is terrible. I get it now. My second pregnancy was not so kind to me, but that's okay because it is just a few short weeks, so you will power through. But one of the things that I really found to help combat my nausea was peppermint tea or peppermint candies. The smell of peppermint is supposed to help wake you up, but it's also supposed to calm your nausea. So one of those things was just like if I would have peppermints in my car, peppermints in my handbag, um, just making sure something so that like I didn't get a weird taste in my mouth that would make me feel nauseous or just when I felt like I needed something in my stomach but not actually food. Peppermint, just like sucking down a peppermint felt really good. A lot of times too before bed. So I went through a very large box of peppermint tea. I will link the one that I ordered down below from Amazon, but you can kind of get any brand that your store sells as well. Speaking of peppermint, one of the other things that helped me out immensely was essential oils diffusing at night. I found that peppermint oil, clearly, lavender oil and lemon oil was so helpful. I tried to steer away from peppermint at night only because it kind of kept me awake. Um, same with lemon, it felt like kind of bright and citrusy that I found I didn't have as easy of a time sleeping, but lavender oil next to my bed diffusing every night, I'm telling you, made such a big difference for me. It made me really pull my head out of that nauseous state and help me relax. Another thing that I found myself reaching for quite often was indigestion medication. I personally have night heartburn more so than anything, and I think that a lot of pregnant moms can relate to that because you are laying down, so being reclined and having your reflux be a little bit more laid back um, kind of aggravates it more. I did try to stop eating a little bit before bedtime, but I have to say I was guilty and ate like a lot of cereal right at bedtime. So if you are someone that needs to have a full belly before you go to sleep, one of the anti um, indigestion medications I personally recommend as well as my doctor did was the Mylanta. The Mylanta is a liquid form. So when you drink that, it really coats your entire esophagus for the whole evening. I found that one to be the absolute best at night. The other good natural alternative that I use is called Maddie's. Um, I will link a picture of it here as well and link it in the description box below. But that one is a natural remedy, so it's a good alternative to Tums or anything else that you might take. Um, I'm not a big Pepsid fan. I don't know, I never really have been, um, but you can take whatever works best for you. Another thing that helped me a lot in the first trimester was something that's not 100% necessary, but to me was a good investment, was a nice new comfy set of PJs. Let's be honest, it's 
a rough day, usually during the day. And when you get in bed at night, the first thing that you want is just to be comfortable and like so cozy. So I went ahead and bought myself a new set of PJs. Um, I try to do that every now and then. Like I also do it in the beginning of my third trimester because some of the PJs I have won't really fit that nicely, but it's also just like a good um, self-care comforting thing, especially when you're pregnant, to find a really comfortable pair of PJs. And then I usually end up bringing those to the hospital with me when I deliver. Buying myself a new pair of PJs literally somehow makes my nighttime feel more exciting. <laughs> that makes any sense but I like would get excited to get in bed and in my PJs um, especially with like diffusing some essential oils having a new pair of PJs makes you just feel better right it's like when you wake up and you do your hair and makeup and like sometimes when you dress successful you feel successful like when you dress in a new comfy pajama I felt like I sleep better and sleep is so important in that first trimester I would actually pay for a new pair of pajamas to achieve that. All right, you guys, last on my list is a very good pregnancy app. So there are a few apps that I personally like. I'm gonna go ahead and plug them on the screen here of which ones I like um, and why. The first one is the Pregnancy Plus app. The reason I really like this app is you can see baby in quote real time. Um, they have a very good 3D visual of what baby looks like during each time, what your changing body will look like as baby grows and they give you some detailed um, ideas of what is going on during your pregnancy as well. You can also upload pictures, appointments. I do like those features. I tend to use my eye calendar more so, so those really are irrelevant for me, but I like to read about baby every single Sunday night before I turn my week on Monday morning. That is like my ritual, so having those apps, I do like to keep up with baby's growth and see what is changing because I have so forgotten from my first pregnancy and see exactly what goes on week by week. The other app that I really enjoy is the Ovia pregnancy app. I personally used Ovia for period tracking. Um, so that one I'm just partial to because I'm familiar with the platform. I do like that they have a Q and A for users to go back and forth for pregnancy questions. And like, it's like a little, um, forum, I guess you could say. Um, I like that because I like to be able to sometimes feel like I'm not alone in certain questions I may have or what's going on with me in that week. Um, YouTube is also a great resource, but something about someone being able to answer right away and just say like, yeah, girl, not alone. I felt this too is a nice reassuring thing. So if you're looking for a nice, good free app, check out one of these two. guys that wraps up my first trimester survival guide i hope that helps out anyone going into their first trimester if you want to save this video if you have any of these symptoms and need good tips on what to do feel free to refer back but it is one of those things that you just kind of have to experience for yourself like there's no real knowing what to expect. Every pregnancy is different, every mom is different. So just know you are not alone with your symptoms and you may have it worse than others, you may have it less better than others. Either way, at the end of this nine months, you're gonna get to hold your little baby and everything will all be worth it. So just hang in there. I did not forget about baby's gender reveal. So you guys, we are so excited to share with you that baby is A girl we cannot wait to have Avi as a big sister and have a little sister in the house I just cannot believe it's a girl everyone in my family we all thought baby was going to be a boy so it is so wild to think that baby is a girl Avi has a sister coming soon in September and we absolutely are filled with joy if this was content that you liked please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for more content like this it really helps my channel Channel. and feel free to follow me on Instagram for more real-time updates on baby's growth what is going on in our life and what we are doing I am so happy to have all my subscribers here and those who are not subscribed we would love to have you but until then guys thank you so much and we will see you in the next one